This screencast shows how to work with probe events in JProfiler. To see some real-world data, we are going to profile CommaFeed, which is an RSS reader with a drop wizard backend and a React frontend. The frontend dev server is already running, so let's use the JProfiler IDEA plugin to profile the CommaFeed backend. We're not interested in the startup phase, so we don't record anything. We'll be focusing on the probes, which are contained in several view sections. The first stop will be the HTTP server probe. No recording has been started, so no data is currently shown. We could now click on the recording actions in the various probes and in the CPU section, but that would be a lot of work, and the recordings would not be synchronized. It's more convenient to use a recording profile. I have already defined some profiles, but we want to record a special combination of probes for comma feed, so we're going to create a new profile. We want CPU data to see stack traces, JDBC and Hibernate, because that's what Drop Wizard uses, both HTTP server and HTTP client to analyze incoming and outgoing HTTP requests, and finally, raw sockets. Then we start the new recording profile. Let's perform some actions in the browser UI. We first add a subscription to the Kotlin block. And then we open a couple of feed items. That should be enough to create some activity for our probes. As you can see, the server only handles REST calls. The UI is served by the front-end dev server. While the hotspot view shows cumulated data, the single probe events are still available in the events view. Event recording is a separate recording for each probe. The state of the recording action is persistent. It's activated now because I have already done that in the past. The session settings also have a checkbox for this recording state on a per probe basis. Depending on the probe and the activity of the profiled application, a lot of probe events can be recorded. Because JProfile accumulates information immediately while recording, retaining the probe events is not necessary for the accumulated views. And the number of probe events is capped. When the cap is hit, all the probe events are discarded. In the session settings, you can increase that cap if necessary. The RSS reader backend needs to fetch data for the subscriptions with HTTP calls. This is measured by the HTTP client probe. Each event has a duration, and you can see the distribution of all events in the durations histogram. By selecting a time range, you can filter the events in the table. Filters are added as tag labels above the table and can be removed with their close button. Another context-dependent way of adding a filter is to select a row in the table and use the context menu. Filter equal to contains all filterable columns. For a duration, the filter greater than and filter less than submenus are generally more applicable. The most generic way to add a filter is the filter selector at the top. Text matching options are available in the drop-down inside the text field. We've now inverted the text filter. Let's switch to the database probes. The JDBC probe does not only measure JDBC operations, but also connects them to the JDBC connections, which are shown in the timeline and the connections views. There are a lot of different views here, so we have to scroll to the events view. Probe events in JProfiler often have a type that has a separate filter drop-down at the top. Here you can select one or multiple types to filter the event table. The duration histogram will show the distribution of the filtered events. To add event filters, you can also go to the other views and use the show events actions there. For example, in the hotspots view, we can select all events for a particular hotspot. This combines with the existing filters, currently the probe type selection. 
we can even select the node in the back traces and only select those events. For example, these are the events with a particular JavaScript stack trace when the fetch request was performed. That information is supplied by the JProfiler Origin Tracker plugin in Chrome. The Show Events action is also available on the toolbar. Setting a filter of the same type replaces the previous filter. Another important filter is the time range filter that can be set in the probe telemetries. Selecting a time range will switch to the events view. Now we have three filters, the type filter, a hotspot with backtrace filter, and a time range filter. We clear them individually. Each event has an associated JDBC connection, as you can see in the connection ID column. In the connections view, the show events action will set the corresponding filter. Each event has a stack trace that you can see on the selection tab. When you select multiple events, a CPU hotspot analysis of the selected events is shown. You can change the view to probe hotspots or to a probe call tree. In addition to duration, some probes also measure memory throughput, like the socket probe. Here we see a throughput histogram as well, with the possibility of filtering throughput ranges. Probe events are of great help in debugging specific performance problems. To find events of interest, JProfiler gives you a lot of tools to narrow down the set of displayed events. I'll leave you with a view of the Hibernate probe. Here you see the Hibernate queries with their nested JDBC statements and the distribution of their duration.